So I'm playing around with the new supplies and the first thing I did was to cut out the face and the ears and I used a scrap piece of file folder to cut it out, to cut out the face with. So that gave me kind of a, a creamy tone to use but what I did find is trying to use mixed media art supplies over it was a little difficult. Um, I might try using clear gesso over the file folder and then maybe it might be a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to play around with that a little bit, but I, I did um, have a hard time getting the face to shade and be the way that I wanted. It turns out, it turns out cute, and I used um, the stamps. I used the face stamps, this one up here, to create her eyes and lips, and then I added a little bit of my own touch to it which is what everybody should really do to make your, make it your own. Um, I used this hair set, this one here, for creating this hair. And so I just used a plain piece of brownish colored, it's like a really light brown colored card stock, nothing special. I traced out the hair, that's what you do. And it, it calls for using um, the paper brads that's why there's a circle at the top of the like the ponytails and it's so that you can make the ponytails movable and I chose to not make mine movable so I just uh, cut a little a little piece right here and then just glued it to the back side and then there's this piece that you would glue to the back to make it nice looking but I think I'm probably going to use this doll on an art journal page so I don't didn't feel like I needed to do that and I didn't want to have our ponytails movable so customize it you know that's what using art supplies is for is creating something and making it your own and how it's going to work for you and your project so if you want to make it movable then you would leave that circle part on if you want to make it just in place you could just glue it in place and this is what she's come out with and I shaded her ponytails I did take a pen and I created lines for the hair to make hair movement instead of it being just a um flat shape like this I added in the little pen marks and then I used um, alcohol markers to create the different dimensions in her hair and she's super cute I'm liking this so far now I'm going to cut out one of the paper dolls a really nice feature of this is that this is all one sheet a lot of times when we get die cuts they're um, individual little pieces and you have to break them apart but then you have all these little tiny pieces that can easily get lost so i just want to say that i love the way that kim designed this to be one piece there's little holes for pushing it and popping it out of the die but you can put your one piece of paper down in any color of um, configuration color for whatever color you want your skin tone to be and cut out all the pieces at one time with no little tiny itty bitty parts to lose. And I'm playing around with different papers and cutting these out of some different things. Um, with that first face I had tried, I used a file folder because I love the color of it. But, um, and I've, I've tried cardstock, but for those two things, for the way that I like to color um, and shade things, I didn't like it. So I've tried this is watercolor paper, um, 120 pound, which I really like. I think the 120 pound is a, a perfect, perfect weight. So I'm playing around with watercolor paper. And then this set over here is Bristol paper, 100 pound Bristol paper. So I've got two sets. One is watercolor and one is Bristol. Okay, I put them in baggies and I marked them that this is Bristol and this is watercolor so that I can play around with them and see what I think of the two different types of paper. Um, you could use cardstock. There's a lot of nice cream colored cardstocks that would work just fine. And I think it all depends just on your preference for if you want to shade the body pieces, like, you know, make them be more rounded and more shaded. And I love to do shading. If you don't mind it to just be kind of simplistic and flat, then use cardstock. So I'm just playing around with some mixed media papers to just um, try a different take on it. Starting with the watercolor paper and I'm using um, a, a touch marker. This is an alcohol marker so it's kind of like a Copic would be. And I'm going to just color my little pieces with alcohol marker. 
And of course I'm not worried too much about this part because I know I'm going to put clothing on it, but the shoulders might show and I know that the neck needs some shading. So this is what I'm talking about. I like to come in and do a little bit of shading and you can do more of that later too when it's all put together. But of course watercolor paper, I like how watercolor paper looks with uh, different mediums. So if this were the body I'm going to use and I'm going to put this hat on it, see how that neck would look. That would look really nice. So, so far I'm already loving using watercolor This paper. is the Paper Brad die, so I use this next and I ran that through twice just to cut out 10 of them to have them to play around with. And now I'm going to uh, try for the first time putting her arms together. So the first thing that you do is you take your tweezers and you fold this. Every other one you fold down. So you go around and you fold them in every other one. Like that. Hopefully you can see that on camera. And then you're going to put that through this piece. This is the little arm connector piece and you're going to put those little tabs through this piece. Just like that. And then you take your tweezers and you fold that little tab over like this. So you fold them out. Like that. Hopefully that focuses there so you can see that. There's the three tabs. So there's three on this side and three on this side. And now you take our glitter glue or whatever glue you have that has a really fine tip and you're going to put glue just on those little dots, just on those little tiny tabs and then put one of these circles down. So I glued the little circle to the back side and then I'm going to put dots of glue on this side just on the little tabs and it's going to connect this arm so you put that into place just like that and let it dry a little bit before you move it so that's got the little tabs through and a little dot of glue i'm going to put this one in place and then flip it over and glue a circle to the back like that. So this is what you end up with. And I'm going to just let that dry a little bit before I move it. So here's another one. I folded up the three prongs so you have this triangle and then the prongs on the other side and then you would put it through just like that and then I'm going to put a dot of glue a little bit of glue on the center and the three prongs put a little circle on the back flip this over spread out those prongs put a little dot of glue on each end of the prongs and then put this arm piece into place
and the easiest way to fold these little tabs down is to take your tweezers and put your tweezers and hold the piece like that and then push down on it like that and then turn it skip one grab and push and then you'll end up with the nice three tabs in and three tabs flat and you put the three tabs up through the little hole that's already punched in your piece A circle on the back, fold them down in the front, And put that arm into place and then you end up with a movable piece like this next I'm going to use a t-shirt I'm going to use the full-sized t-shirt the full-length one and some striped you can hardly see that this is striped but it is some striped pattern paper and I'm going to trace that and cut it out and the two little sleeves and then with these necklines you just decide what type of neckline you want and I think I'm going to just do a regular round t-shirt type neckline. So the templates have the little holes, uh, the little places to mark for the holes for you to punch out but if you don't put those on and you put this down over and glue it into place you can just flip this over and use the holes that's on the back side to line up your punch and punch the holes out but first I'm going to do a neckline so I'm going to take this what this is for is choose your neckline and then place this over your t-shirt and it just gives you the markings to draw and cut out that neckline so now I can cut that neckline out And erase my pencil lines so this could get glued into place like this onto the body And now I can take my crop -a on the smallest hole, set it to the smallest hole, punch, flip this over, line it up, and punch my holes. So if you go from the back side, you don't have to punch it twice and try to line them up. You can just punch it out right onto that body. So I folded up my little paper brad. I'm putting it from front to back on this t-shirt and then flipping it over and spreading it out and putting a little circle on the back side you have to use such a small amount of glue and I figured out that the key is don't press down too hard because if you do it squishes out the glue and then it won't be movable so you kind of have to be a little careful at this stage put your little tiny dots put that arm into place and don't I'm not pressing down I'm just kind of setting it into place and letting it dry 
and that seems to work the best and then I don't have problems with it getting stuck and not being movable. But look how cute. That's how that t-shirt turns out. And look how cute that is. Super cute t-shirt. And of course now is when you could take your um, brush pens and you could add some shading to your t-shirt. So come in here with a brush pen and do a little shading to it. Maybe put a little shading around the collar or a little color around the collar. That's cute. Super cute. So for putting this head on the body and making it move, I'm going to use the little the little uh, paper brads. So I'm going to do my little brad trick again. Uh, fold the brad every other. And then I'm going to apply this through the hole right here in her neck. Put the dot on the back side and then put the head in place on the front side with just a minimal amount of glue. So I have her arms assembled in her head and her head moves. And it's cute little swivel. So what I think I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to put the lower body and the legs aside and use them on another doll. I'm going to make a different doll for those. So I'm going to put those aside. And the hair uh, template does come with this back piece, but because I'm putting her in an art journal, you don't need it. But if you were going to use it, you'd flip it over and you'd put it on the back. And then that would just make the back of her head look nicer than put together like that. But for a journal, don't need it. So I'm going to just save it for another time. So what I'm going to do next is um, on the next doll, I'm going to use one of these um, denim outfits. But because I have a fun idea for her, all I need to do now is to just decide which hands I'm going to use. So what I want to do is... Get out the hands, the stamps, and the templates, the die cuts, and um, I'm going to run that through and cut out all these hands because you do it all at once. You could put a, a little piece of paper, I think, over one set of hands if you want, but since I'm running it through the machine, I might as well cut out all these hands and just have an envelope of them to play with. But the first thing you want to do is stamp the fingers on to the hands so let me show you how that works okay i'm using a piece of cream colored cardstock i took the little um stamp that says front so that's going to be the front of the hands since i think i'm going to use the hands that um that are just I, i'm only going to see the front side in the position that i'm going to put her on on my art journal page so i'm using a coffee archival ink and i'm going to go ahead and stamp this See if I can do this and have it make sense. So I'm going to stamp that first. And then what you want to do is you're going to Put this down over it, turn your, your die cut over, and you line it up with those little corner notches. So you line up all the notches, and you go ahead and run this through your die cut machine just like that. And I think what I'll do is put a little piece of washi tape. I use washi tape that I don't really care for, for holding things down. So I think I'm going to do that. That way it'll stay in place. So I'm going to take it to my die cut machine and run it through. Okay, so I ran it through my die cut machine and now I just need to pick out which hands I want to use. And if you look at the front, 
See, they're all stamped with the finger marks from the rubber stamp. Now, if I wanted to to put, if I were going to put the hands on the doll and have you see the back side of them, you can use this negative space as um, kind of a template for holding these. You put them back into place. You flip it over and you um, line up those corners again but now you just do the one that says back and it'll stamp the lines on the back side of the hand like the markings that are in the hand and the little folds and creases and things will get rubber stamped with the back sides so you have that option of stamping the front the back or both when you make your hands and these hands are pretty nifty because they give you a lot of positions for possibly holding things in your doll's hands I like that, that it's, there's straight hands and bent hands and hands that are kind of doing different things. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to choose, let's see, I'm going to choose this straight hand here. And I think I'm going to do this bent hand like this. So I'm going to choose those two hands and then I'm going to put these in an envelope for hands for future dolls. So for the page I'm doing I decided I'm going to do the little overalls that come in the denim kit. So I'm pulling out the overall straps, the little bib top and then um, let's see I think the skirt, the overall skirt so I'm using a blue piece of cardstock and it's kind of the color of pale denim. And what you want to do with these pieces is to trace them and cut them out. So I'm going to go ahead and trace around those pieces and cut them out. Okay, and I want to make these cute little... Um, this is kind of an example, obviously, of what Jean looks like. And so what I did is I, I put my um, paper down on a light box and put this underneath. But because it's cardstock, you can't see through it. You would need a thin blue paper, and I don't have any. And since I used cardstock and I love the color of it, I'm just going to have to eyeball it. So what I'm going to do is just, just use a pencil and draw those lines. So... Of course, you can see that that is a line that comes across here. And where these are would be the little belt loops. So what I'm doing is just looking at this and making the, making the marks. And there's a little template for the pocket. So I'm going to use that, put that in place, and trace around that. And make the little pocket. And then here's the other little piece that makes the little flap to the pocket. So you can use those as a reference. And then, of course, you're going to have a circle in the middle. And the stitching, which I can do with a pen. So there's my little top part. And then there's this little piece that you can put, put down and use it to make those lines for the little pockets and you could come across if you want and make that little one I mean it's pretty easy to to draw these yourself by just looking at it put the little ribbon in there and then straight down from that is the little place where the zipper goes So I've kind of got my little pieces drawn on like that, and this is going to go like this. Okay, so that's pretty cute for my overalls. And I'm just going to take a pen and kind of copy along with what is on this and make the stitching marks and the straight lines and do my pen work on this. And then I'm going to use some blue ink to distress it and make it look more like denim. I glued the top bib part to the bottom and then I did the lines and the stitching and so that's my cute little overall section and then what I'm going to do is to take some uh, Tim Holtz Distress Ink in faded jeans of course because this is jeans 
and I'm just going to do a little distressing and that's really going to make it look like jean overalls. I love it. Super cute. So I'm going to go ahead and distress that and then um, this little tiny piece here, this little piece is to make the little connectors where the straps would come over and connect to the overalls. So I'm going to use a gray piece of cardstock to cut those little pieces out and um, and then I think I'm going to use a silver ink, a silver a Posca pen to make them silver and then make the straps that are going to go over her shoulders. So I used a gold, a silver Posca pen to make the little um, rivets and distress ink and boy it looks cute 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 look at that denim overall little dress and here are the straps and for my doll because it's going in an art journal I don't care what the back of it looks like but I did go around the edge with a little distress and what I'm going to do is with these little tiny little dilly wobbers um, that's what I'm calling them dilly wobbers I'm going to just stick the paper through make sure that it fits through the little slot there. I'm going to stick the paper through. I need my tweezers here. Okay, and put it on like that. And then I'm going to fold it over and I'm going to put a little dot of glue and then that will be look like the strap is on the little tabby thing. So I'm going to do that to both of them. So here are the straps and I've got my little silver connectors for the overalls and what I'm going to do is slip it over her behind her neck like that. And I'm going to glue them into place one at a time onto the overall piece like that. So look how super cute that is. You got the straps over the shoulder, the little connectors, and I colored them silver, and then the little denim. And I didn't do legs, but that's because I'm using her on an art journal and I have a plan for her. So um, that is super cute. And I'm so my first experience with this denim set was a positive one. I love the little overall outfit, super cute. And I went ahead and put the pieces back onto the um, the part of the negative part of the template and I just taped them with washi tape so that I can keep it nice and be able to see all the parts and know what they're specifically for instead of putting them in an envelope. That's just me. So the denim collection, this is the dinky denim collection that made her outfit. And I had made her skirt a little bit longer than what the little template shows because I, I wanted to put her on my art journal page and um, not use legs. So this is where she's going to go. My art journal page has got a long ways to go and I am going to use a whole bunch of different cut out die cut flowers that are from the Tim Holtz flower collections for Sizzix and I just used my um, my Sizzix die cut machine and I cut out a whole bunch of different flowers of all different colors and now I'm going to create a garden and so I'm not going to glue her completely into place yet what I'm going to do is just put a dot of glue behind her and then leave this all loose because I want the flowers to be coming up behind her and around her and then I can tuck them and make them um, make the garden. So I'm going to go ahead and work on that and I'll show you what it looks like. So here is my completed art journal page using the Paper Babes doll. I love her on this page. She's so cute. I added some freckles to her face, some um, silk ribbons around her ponytails. Of course her head moves. And her arms move. I put um, little tiny gems that were from a gem painting kit that someone sent me in Happy Mail. Thank you, Mimi. On as the little um, the little buttons that hold on the straps to her overalls. So here's her overalls. I drew a little hand trowel and put that in one hand. I drew a um, watering can. The flowers are all glued on 
and dimensional. Isn't that cute? It's really cute with those die cut flowers and I popped some of them up to make them dimensional. So I've got those saying on here, how does your garden grow? And then in a circle up here in the sun, I've got with silver bells and cockle shells and pretty maids all in a row. That's from an old um, nursery rhyme from when I was a little girl. And then I've got here comes the sun, some little dragonflies. So there you go. And I really like my paper doll. And this is just the beginning of playing around with paper babe paper dolls. So look how she turned out. I love it. Super cute and lots of fun. So uh, there will be a link in the description box below for where you can um, find the Paper Babe doll products and um, Kim's Etsy shop and a code for a discount if you're interested. So thanks for stopping by and I'm going to do more videos showing some more paper dolls using Paper Babe's stamps. Well, this is a little afterthought bonus. I looked at my layout and I realized there was something that was missing. So I added little cuffs to her gloves. So see how I just put that down on some cardstock. I left her hands the light color that I had originally cut them out. But then I added little cuffs to make it look like garden gloves. So now she's got garden gloves. That's what it was missing.